we have robot surgery, robot manufacturing. Why not robot estheticians or lash artists? I wouldn't know it from personal experience, but getting fake lashes apparently takes two to three hours. And a new robot can do it in just 20 minutes and could eventually do everything from makeup to hair transplants. So the only question is, would you let a robot make you look prettier? In this episode of Tech First with John Katsir, we chat with Philippe Sanchez, CEO of Loom. Tell me, why do we need a robot to apply eyelash extensions? Well, John, eyelash extension has become a very popular treatment, certainly post-COVID, um, but it takes two hours and a half to get a full set of eyelash extension. A robot wow. can do the job in fraction of the time. We can do the job in 30 minutes instead of two hours with a level of precision, safety, repeatability that manual applications can simply not offer. Wow. Wow. Two hours. I had no idea. I have obviously never gotten uh, fake eyelashes applied. Um, perhaps I'll do it now just to get the experience of it. Uh, talk to me about how it works. Uh, tell me about the technology. So the technology is actually a very advanced piece of technology. It is a combination of advanced robotics, computer vision, and um, artificial intelligence that together duplicate the job of a lash artist, but it's doing it in a way that is so much faster, so much safer, and so much more precise than, than manual application can offer. Interesting. Now, it's a two-hour job by a human, 20 minutes by the robot. What's that two hours like if you are the person getting eyelash supplied? Is that, that's a long chunk of your day, right? Um, did, what's, that, how, what's the difference in the feel of getting done by the robot in 20 minutes? So in a traditional uh, manual application, uh, mainly women, but some guys do it as well, um, you go into a studio in a salon and you've got a lash artist taking care of you. You s lay down on a bed and the lash artist, uh, which typically is very skilled with a lot of dexterity skills, um, hunch over your head and very closely looking at magnifier, um, isolate your lash with a tweezer yes. on one hand and on the other hand, take an extension, dip it in, a, in an adhesive and carefully place it over one lash and then she moved to the next and then she moved to the next and then to the next and two hours and a half later you're done with beautiful lash uh, <laughs> that looks very natural uh, and lasts for about a month or so so it is a, a wonderful service but it takes two hours and a half Wow. It's interesting because you mentioned that the lash artists have incredible dexterity with their fingers, right? Um, perhaps some of them have a future in surgery. I'm not entirely sure. And perhaps your robot does as well. Uh, the obvious question, obvi clearly, is safety, right? You have a robot that is now working right on your eyes, probably the most sensitive part of your body. Uh, what have you done in terms of safety? How safe is it? So the system is extremely safe and safety is paramount to, to the Loom technology. Um, one need to understand that you do not need strength, power to manipulate a lash. A lash is very, very light. And so the, the prongs, the wongs that are isolating the lash and placing the lash extension are very, very light. They're like feather lights. And they're also held by very soft magnet so that if they were to touch anything but your lashes, they softly disengage and fall without causing any harm. Wow. So if anything were to happen that is totally outside of the control of the technology or the environment, imagine an earthquake or imagine you, know, you <laughs> sneeze or something. <laughs> well, if you were to touch those little wongs, with anything else than your lashes, they're simply fall. And that provide a foolproof or can't fail safety that is fully embedded in the design of the machine and is actually safer 
than humans because a human you need to react on her to be able to respond to something here whatever happens cannot simply hurt I, I I can believe that. I can believe that because I know or have an issue or something like that. If you've got to detach the robotic arm by those, you know, weak magnets, then uh, anything that, that potentially happens uh, is, is very safe. You use some artificial intelligence in this uh, robot as well, right? Talk to me about that. So there are three components that makes the technology advanced and very unique. The first one is the, the main mechanical robotics aspect of it. The second is computer vision, and the third is artificial intelligence. And all three combine to a, um, a patented and, and unique uh, technology application. The, the, the robotic, to understand the complexity of it, on the mechanical, mechanical side, we place LASH at, with the accuracy of a few microns. So the robotics wow. is really working at the microscopic level, um, which you could argue some robot in the microchips industry already work at this level. But here we work with human product and human mm -hmm. products are different from one client to the next. And a human can solve some time move as well. And, and so for both the mechanical aspect of it and the computer vision aspect of it, which requires machine to work with the accuracy of a few microns, we're really pushing the edge of what computer vision and, and robotics can do on humans. Add to that the fact that one client is different from the next and we, we service a broad range of people. This is where machine vision can come in. This application is arguably a perfect application for, for AI, I meant to say for AI, as a lot of what we do has to do with pattern recognition, mm -hmm. which, uh, whether it is identifying a good lash among lash, whether it is um, identifying a type of an eye type um, or a, making an aesthetic call on what looks good versus what doesn't look good is perfect application for artificial intelligence. It's a lot of recognizing patterns and at that job, machines are very, very good at doing it. It forces us to do thousands and tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of images of, of, to illustrate the different problem we're going after. Um, but it will also uh, underscore how advanced uh, that technology is and, and what the service um, or how we can advance uh, the, the quality of that service through a robotic application. It is interesting to me because, as you mentioned, uh, we've built robots before that deal in extremely small, fine, delicate things, microscopic precision for manufacturing, those sorts of things. But they're dealing with, as you said, objects, <laughs> things that, you know, if you make a mistake, okay, you've wasted some money, you've wasted some time, you haven't hurt somebody. Now you're dealing with humans and eyes. And so all that machine uh, image processing, recognition, everything like that to see, okay, this is an eye, here's the eyelashes here's where I place the next one, here's where the next one goes. Very, very interesting. Philippe, how did you get into this? What's your story? Well, my story, I was brought into this uh, by the founder of the company and, and the board of the company a few years ago, a couple, of, you know, a year and a half ago. And on my early meeting with a team, I was struck. Uh, I was in awe with both the 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 technology aspect of where they were that were developing um, and with the opportunity, um, I could see very quickly that on one hand, the team was developing a very unique um, application that would on one hand transform the consumer experience. It's not often where you have such a concrete transformation, two hours and a half in 30 minutes a much safer and a much more precise uh, consumer experience and power by technology is a phenomenal competitive advantage. Um, the second is clearly that you also transform the work of the lash artist herself. Today, it is a tough job uh, that lash artists need to first uh, learn the skills of applying lash extension, it's tough. 
yeah. uh, you need to have dexterity skills, of course, and it takes two hours of being hunched back over a person. And, you know, there is so many clients you can process in a day and so many days in a week. It is a difficult job. Suddenly, you take all the hard part of the job away with that technology. You do it faster. Uh, you do it better. But you also allow the lash artist to be rewarded for um, offering a bespoke service and a high quality service that engenders loyal following. And that's certainly much more appealing for the lash artist herself. And last, for any of us looking at the economics, well, automation completely transformed the economics of the category. You obviously boost your throughputs for one lash artist or one bed. You're now able to service two, three, four times the number of clients in any given day. You reduce your labor dependency and your space dependency, and you transform a business that at the onset is already very profitable, but now you make uh, or you can offer a level of returns uh, and level of scalability that simply you could not dream of in uh, with just standard manual processes. Um, so that's what brought me in, and I said, let's let's jump and build um, this company and make it a large and successful story. It's uh, kind of the perfect COVID product, right? Because it's a personal service. It's ki the kind of personal service that has been difficult during COVID, uh, really challenging to you because it requires somebody literally centimeters, inches from your face <laughs> working for two and a half hours and, and removes that, correct? So COVID is, uh, in a sense, a silver lining uh, for us, for all that we dislike COVID uh, and how it disrupted all of our lives. When it comes to this business, um, it really, it did two main things for us. The first one is we all spend so many hours on Zoom uh, looking at each other on a camera. And so, and even when you're outside in the street, anything above the mask is central to any beauty treatment. So today the eyes has it and offering a service that deal with arguably the most sensitive part of beauty expressions, lashes, is uh, took a boost of relevance in a post-COVID world. Um, but you Just also in on that one real quick. I interviewed Tyra Banks uh, a number of years ago, and she was doing a thing called smizing or smiling with your eyes. So that would be perfect for today. <laughs> Absolutely. So clearly the eyes have it, and being in the lash business today is, is, is a good time. And as, as shown by so many brands and A-list celebrity jumping into the category and and uh, that's certainly a category that is extremely rapidly growing as we speak. But you spoke about the other element is pre-COVID spending two hours and a half with somebody a few inches from your face was perhaps acceptable. It is certainly no longer the case post-COVID. And so the technology gets also a boost of relevance by simply minimizing the time that you need to be in a room and suddenly close to a person it's sort of perfectly designed for a post-COVID world. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, as you know, Tech First is about tech that's changing the world uh, and innovators who are shaping the future. I wanted to ask you, what does a spa look like in 10 years? Well, for us, a spa uh, will have a loom technology in it. Um, <laughs> yes. and, right. And um, we'll do a good job when any one of us as consumer walks in for comfort, pleasure, then leaves uh, fe feeling pampered with perhaps even a boost of, of renewed confidence because we feel looking very good and appealing thanks to a, a beautiful treatment that can last for uh, four months. I think um, affordable beauty and, and efficient beauty where you don't need to spend a lot of time you know, in the morning or on a daily basis is, is, is certainly... Uh, in the mind of most of our consumer today and, and the Zoom technology, um, the Loom technology, I meant to say, will apologize for that, John. Um, and Loom will contribute to, to providing this level of effortless beauty that most of our uh, customer today uh, seek to find. 
Excellent. And um, where do you see Loom playing in, in, in five, 10 years? I mean, you're doing the Lash extension machine right now, but that seemed to have wider applicability. I mean, the eyes is maybe the most sensitive part of the, of the body, right? Of the face itself. So there, there would seem to be other, other things that you could use this technology for, perhaps in other form factors, or other robots, or are you exploring some of that? Yes, actually, um, John, the, the, for the time of foreseeable future, we've got a chance to really reinvent a category, the eyelash extension category, and build a world-class brand with both domestic ambition and international ambition. We have a chance to build our own chain of studios and also license the technology to key mm. established brand here in the US and also abroad. And that's a step one of the plan and the potential for the Loom technology. Now, it's also true that the, the patent, the first to market advantage and the know-how that the build, that the team is building around highly precise application that requires um, microscopic level of accuracy and safety, this can be applied elsewhere than lash extension. And in the world of beauty, you've got adjacent markets uh, such as brows or spray tanning, microderm abrasions, a range, mm. even hair restorations, a range of services. We could both be clients there. <laughs> we could both be clients. Uh, a range of service services where looms uh, know-how and uh, broad patents that are already uh, approved in the U.S. and in many countries uh, can be used and applied. And this will be part of the long-term future of the company. Interesting. I guess final question here is, can somebody get this done today? Uh, where can they go to get that done? Or is it a couple months away? Uh, what's the process right now for in terms of commercialization? So... Today, uh, literally, we in Oakland, California, we do have our lab where we work on uh, test clients and subjects uh, every day. Uh, and we're testing now on, on a broad range of consumers to demonstrate, uh, one, the efficacy of the technology, that it can do the job, and that we can do it fast enough. So at this stage, uh, you know, today, you could come over uh, or we could show you um, how the machine uh, apply a light set uh, already at the speed of a human. And in the upcoming months, we'll engage into the second chapter of the company where we take now this piece of technology and, and both improve the performance in terms of speed and range of services and product that the, that the machine can do. Um, so in about six to nine months, it'll be time for us to open our first studio to the public and start to provide those services, at least in the Bay Area, then evolve in the key beauty markets, Los Angeles, New York, and some of the key uh, beauty market in the USA. Wonderful. Philippe, thank you so much for your time. So glad to be here. Mm -hmm.